As users of P6, we think of total float as an activity field that's calculated by the P6 scheduler, assigned to an activity. But in reality, total float is not activity float. A lot of times, total float is shared float. It's shared along a path of activities. So if you think of an activity as having a bunch of days of float, and that float gets eaten, then the successor activities will also have their float affected, chewed up. So float is often shared on a path of activities. Let's look at a simple example. You've probably seen these network diagrams before. The critical path is in red. I have total float values in green. And then I have the early and late dates calculated there as well. Okay, so let's look at the float path along the bottom, ADGHK. As you can see, all of those activities have three days of float. So this is a float path with three days of float. And if activity D eats up the total float, then there's no more float left for G, H, and K because it's really shared along that path. Okay, so what is a float path? Well, it's a sequence of activities where the float is shared by the adjacent activities. That float path can be a float path of one activity or many activities. Let's look at activity E. It has one day of float, but there's no adjacent activities with the same float. So it's a, on a float path all on its own. Same thing with C and same thing with J. So how many float paths do we have in this project? Well, if you count the critical path as one, E as another, C, J as two more, and then the path along the bottom, that's five float paths. So we have five different float paths on this project. Now, did you know that P6 also can calculate these float paths? Let's dive in and I'll show you how it works. Hey, if you're learning something relevant in this video, do me a favor, just hit the like button, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us to let others know that you are enjoying this content. And if you're on a project controls journey, you're trying to find more information, you're hungry for great knowledge, then hit the subscribe button. That's what we're here for. We want to help people succeed in project controls, scheduling, and other topics relevant. When you do, you'll see it's basically the same network we just looked at, just programmed into P6 with activities A through finish. Okay. We're going to tell P6 to calculate all of the different float paths through this project. Now to understand the results, we need to change our layout a little bit. So we're going to build a special layout. Okay, let's hit the column button. And let's expand um, multiple float paths. And go ahead and add float path and float path order. And I want to put float path at the very top and float path order after it. Okay, great. I also want to make sure that I add in my total float value. So that's under durations and we'll add it in. And I like to put it just after finish free float at the bottom. Let's click OK. Now I wanted to show you how to build this layout so that you know it's not that difficult and you can pull it up at any time. One more thing. Let's go ahead and group. Click the group by. Let's not group by WBS. Let's group by float path. Float path. Okay, click OK. Here's our new layout. Now, ignore these results for a moment. Let's save this as a new layout. Okay, layout, save as, and let's call this my float path layout. Great. Pull this layout up at any time you want to do advanced critical path analysis in P6. It's invaluable. Okay, let's hit the schedule button, F9, or hit this little button here, and let's go to the options tab. Okay, once we're here, there's an advanced tab, and I want you to turn this on, calculate multiple float paths. It looks like it was already on for me. Clack, click that, and let's set this to free float. I'll explain why in a moment. 
And what we'll do is we will display multiple float paths for the ending activity, ending with activity finish. So select activity finish. We can up this to any value we want. 10 is fine, but that's good enough. So once you have it set like this, go ahead and click close and go ahead and click schedule. Okay, you should now see results just like I have. Here we're having P6 calculate the many different paths from the start of the project to our finished milestone and to show us the different float paths that we have. As you can see, we're grouping by float path. So here are the activities on float path one. We've got A, B, F, I, L, and finish. There's E by its, own, by its lonesome, C by its lonesome, J by its lonesome, and then we have that path along the bottom of the project, if you remember, that has D, G, H, K, and it has, here's, here's our float value of three for those. So here's our critical path, float path one. Uh, this one has one day, one day, or three days, and the last one has six days of total float. Now let's group our data by float path. So instead of WBS, we will set this to float path. Go ahead and click OK. And there we have it. Now, we won't see results until we run the scheduler in just a minute. But I really wanted to show you how to make this layout so that you could pull it up at any time you're doing float path analysis on a project. So let's go ahead and save this layout. We'll go to layout here, layout, save as, and let's call it my float path layout. It's a pretty simple layout, but it's going to be invaluable anytime you want to use it to analyze a schedule. Let's go ahead and click the schedule button, and then let's hit the options button on the scheduled pop-up window. From here, because this is an advanced course, we're going to the advanced tab. Here we go. This is where we can tell P6 when it schedules the project to go ahead and calculate the many flow paths on the project. So what we'll do is we'll check this box on. We'll make sure this is set to free float. And then here we can hit the little button and ask it to calculate the float paths from the start to this activity, the finish activity in the project. You can also specify how many float paths you'd like it to calculate, maybe just three or five. If, if there's fewer than 10, it'll calculate as many as it can. I like to leave this at 10, 10 is lots. Okay, so let's close from here and let's go ahead and schedule the project. Well, let's look at the results. What you can see is my activity list divided by these blue bars, which are my float paths. So I have one, two, three, four, five float paths to the project, just like we saw in our network diagram. And if you look at the total float values, you can see that float path one has got zero, so that's our critical path. Float path two has got one day, that's activity E. Activity C has got one day, that's float path three. Float path four is that path along the bottom of the network with our three days. And then lastly, we have it float path five, which is J having six days of float. We have a slight difference there uh, in this calculation versus the network, but let's ignore it for the moment. Okay, now we also have this field here, float path order, and we can sort our results by float path order, which gives me the same thing. And basically, the, it's a listing of the activities in the order along the path. So obviously, A will be earlier, and L would be at the end. Okay, so we can list them that way, and it's common to sort this list by flow path order. Now, what do we do with these results? In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can use this multiple flow path feature in P6 to calculate advanced critical paths or multiple critical paths through a project to intermediate milestones. Hey, you know what? We covered this topic and so much more in our Primavera P6 course. There's a link to it in the description. Check it out.